Um, okay, thank you all for coming. Um, it's been a long time since I've been behind a mic, um, but I hope uh, today we'll have a good conversation. Um, yeah, so let's jump into it. So for the past few years, saying that I've spent a long time uh, not being behind the mic is one of those reasons is that we've been facing some of those posters like um, wash your hands, uh, some signposts of maintain your social distance, um, and this brought us really a, a realization of um, access to water for best kind washing um, as a necessity in our communities. And we also realize that there is limited access to water. But worst still, we realized that we actually lacked up to date information that would enable or created a huge challenge for institutions like governments to actually monitor and create um, sustainable mechanisms for supporting and um, communities and prevent the spread of the pandemic. Um, but we know that um, organizations like the Water Point Data Exchange Program came up and um, desired to update most of this information and create up-to-date um, information and infrastructure for Water Point information. Um, but there we realize that they rely on bureaucratic and very resource intense methods to update their data. And um, just a snippet of that, of how they actually um, acknowledge and encourage everyone else to, you know, share information. Um, just that a snippet of WPDX as a platform or as an institution is because they have a very intense tools for analysis and supporting governments. Um, there are um, for supporting governments to understand water distribution in the different communities and also um, create analysis tools that will help these governments to administer properly, to monitor properly the different um, water distribution systems in the environment. So then um, we thought that the OpenStreetMap community can then come in and help. But how would the OpenStreetMap community help? It's then we need to understand what the water point data exchange program has and what the OpenStreetMap community has to leverage the crowdsourcing, um, you know, the GeoWeb environment for us to be able to update and support um, the integrated analysis of this uh, water information in these tools and then overall relay for decision making and monitoring and management of water resources. Um, and surprising or very important enough is like OpenStreetMap is one of their data sources. They go to OpenStreetMap to collect information and update their tools um, for rehabilitation, for functionality and maintenance, and they have to relay this information to such institutions like government and other authoritative institutions to promote um, and integrate and advise on improved data management. So um, on the right is where you have like a number of tools that they do have for administration, for rehabilitation, basically to review and monitor functionality of these water resources in the different areas. Um, and this is what led us to a project, um, integrating uh, water point data exchange program and OSM schemas for seamless bi-directional water infrastructure data updates. Um, a project um, of everywhere maps, um, youth mappers, and um, Stella Maurice Nakacha from West Virginia University. Um, the team behind the project um, is Cotton Clark, um, and she's the programs manager, um, project manager, and then um, Dr. Makaska Brent, and then I um, running or sitting behind understanding the technicalities of these schemas um, between WPDX and OpenStreetMap. So to critically all um, exploit the understanding of how to integrate these schemas, um, we have to, or we had to sit down and examine um, what we would call the folksonomy for OpenStreetMap or the ontology of data modeling uh, within a GIS system. And it's something that has been followed, especially for buildings and highways. And it has become very common uh, that now buildings and highways are well adopted in OSM, like easily updatable, and um, the mapping is very seamless uh, for the various communities around the world. And then how about for the water 
point because we now realize that it's more important than ever. We know that it's already a need, but it's now more than a need uh, because we've seen how it can devastate lives and nations uh, for lack of water and information like that. So then coming up with such a model is that um, we came up with a few questions of we need to understand what is the existing water tag or what is the existing schema within the open street map and how does this relate to functionality of what already exists or what the WPDX has. And there we developed a criteria and this criteria was about um, five um, rules to follow for us to be able to understand properly the OSM uh, data schema. And that is um, the tag info is what we really relied on because it's the database, the infrastructure database for where all data from OpenStreetMap goes. And then, um, so that's, this tag must exist within this info, tag info. And then this tag um, should only be a node geometry because technically um, a water point um, we, that we desire to understand for monitoring and management is not a river um, and not a lake um, and not a stream. So it should be one that has been established by a certain body um, in a given environment. So it's technically a node. And then uh, it's not simply a suggested tag in OSM. Um, this was to mean that um, it's an intentional tag because most of the projects that go around, um, or most of the tags that come through OSM come after our discourse in agreement within the community that this tag is actually very important and then we can use it in our you know, database or creating um, data. And then also um, the other criteria was it's prevalent within the developing world um, and this comes from the WPDX uh, point of view because this is their major point of focus, um, increase this monitoring and um, evaluation of these resources in most of the countries in um, the global south. And then also the tag would or should share values um, or should have standards at least equitable between OSM and the WPDX itself. So after understanding the criteria or after naming and labeling this criteria, then we came to um, a few, um, a what I would call quality, tagging quality parameters. Um, these ones were an extraction of most of the research that has been around, uh, done around like OSM tagging quality um, by the different researchers and publishers. And from those, we chose to monitor the compliancy of those, the criteria, um, the consistency, the granularity and the completeness um, for just that tag that we need. Um, so this is just an outlook uh, of what we were able to extract out of the tag info database of what actually exists as per that criteria. But just for one realization is that um, there was actually no tag that was specifically a node only. So you find that yes, as much as there is this um, unanimous and common voice of uh, common language of mapping, still there is some work done that is not intentional because I mean OpenStreetMap is for global contribution. So anywhere, anyhow, someone can contribute without contributing through a project and we can have information that you know is all over the place. Um, and so what we did was to eliminate um, all those that had ways and relations of above 1,000 entities labeled. Um, and then also we eliminated all those that had zero projects of contribution because this is like the ranking of how the tag performs within the database. Um, so we eliminated those and we ended up with about six, there were just six, six tags that were now we know actually fulfill the criteria that we set. And then we started to um, examine these through the tagging parameters, the quality, tagging quality parameters. Um, so compliancy, uh, how did we define compliancy? This is mainly the agreement of the tag. Um, for example, we have very many entities and classes within the tag info database. And we say that um, the quality of the tag is by the number of entities um, identified for that label, that given tag. So this was obtained through just the number of nodes that we can extract and specifically have that specific tag. So we did some extraction uh, for the six tags and um, that was the result. Um, 
for the simple representation representation of that of the outcome. So um, the three top were like water source is main, amenity is drinking water, and then pump is no. Um, those were like the three significant ones that stood out. Overall, all the tags did not go above like 50% um, of exhibit in labeling and naming, um, but at least the three uh, I would say were like the most above the other three. And then consistency, um, this is like um, the following the temporal and spatial representation. What we meant here is that um, since we have multiple contributors, it's a geo web and everyone freely is welcome to contribute in OSM, but the consistency of a tag can be examined through the evolution of time. How has the tag been growing over time? Did people pick it up or did projects pick up the tag and then drop it after some time? Um, how has this tag been performing over the years? And also uh, following the criteria that we are looking at the developing world here, we choose a bounding box of where is this tag specially significant? Like where is it mostly distributed? Yes. Or what is the um, performance of this tag in a specific bounding box? So we looked at the temporal, um, evolution this is like the evolution of the tag how it's been moving and growing and this can be accessed through um, the history osm history tag info and yeah we could see that um, still after mapping and identifying these um, the three that stood out all of the tags had over a thousand entities which is good um, like labeling and uh, but over the years you can see that some have progressed and some have actually dropped like some are moving up and some are actually moving down, um, are being left behind. So this is like the evolution process. And from there, we were still able to pick um, as water source was main as the most significant one, like the outstanding one, and then amenity drinking water, and again, pump equals no. And then for the spatial representation, um, I hope uh, my points are clear. Um, so we could see that for the spatial representation, this was mainly like the percentage distribution for the given bounding box, like against the number of nodes within the OSM tag info. And um, understanding all, after extracting all this information, um, we were able to get, um, now there is a flip in the message because this was uh, a focus on the African continent is all that we focused on. We saw that amenity equals water point now was the most significant and it's no longer the other three that we had. And then we had pump equals manual and pump equals no. And I think if you go and like do the extractions through the tag info, you can visibly see how like these different tags actually relate all over the globe. Like um, it's amazing. And uh, then granularity was the other or the fourth tagging quality parameter that we looked at. And then this looks at the, the focus, the, the integrity of the given tag. Like if a tag is being used on almost everything, that means that this tag is not really specific for something, so it's applicable to anything. And here we are looking at functionality of a given water point. We are looking at management of a water infrastructure point. So that means that the lower, um, the combinations of tags that we can attach to this specific tag, the more focused this tag is to report to, about a given entity. And examining that, we extracted all the tag combinations from the tag info, part those six tags that we obtained, and that was the outcome. Um, so we had um, PAM equals yes, looked like um, it was literally the one that was most specific, like you can only point that out to just that specific um, functional point that you have established. Uh, pump equals manual and amenity equals water point. Um, the rest, amenity drinking water, I find that it shares a lot, like it's all over. You have it on a building, you have it on a shop, you have it on a tourist um, a place reserved on OSM, like it's all over the place. So it's not really like very specific for a specific function. It's just for potable water and drinking and this can be accessed anywhere. Um, from the different entities within OpenStreetMap. And then completeness was the last one to examine. And this looked mainly at the attribution of the description of the tag. Um, we have, within a tag, we have the tag and then it has values. 
So you will have like different attributes like pump equals yes, but then we have other things like who is the operator, what is the operational status, what is the name, and who is giving us this information into OpenStreetMap. So looking at these attributes, looking at the functionality or the main role that we are looking at, water infrastructure mapping um, in util these points, is that um, things like operational status are very, very crucial because we want to know uh, the status um, of a given water point. Is it functional or not? Um, we want to know, is it free or is it for a fee? So we, we need to know who is the type, uh, what is the operator type, um, what is the name and what is the source. Um, here for the details, um, I could share with anyone who's interested in like, the details, but uh, for the presentation, I only picked out like, the operational status of that to review and um, against the percentage distribution within that given bounding box that we chose. And yeah, we get um, amenity water point as one that actually has sufficient information about this or looking at the number of tags that we have or the number of entities that have been labeled, um, at least water point, amenity water point has the highest levels of acknowledging the operational status um, of that given point being mapped, then amenity drinking water, and then pump equals manual. So after obtaining these, then now it was time to evaluate and choose um, like which is the most appropriate tag, or what is the ranking of all these tags according to the tagging quality parameters that we have set to fulfill the criteria. And um, just a simple presentation of um, how we scaled them, created a criteria for compliancy, for temporal um, consistency, spatial consistency, granularity, and completeness. And then we simply averaged, just simply averaged. And from that, um, we were able to obtain um, amenity equals water point as the most prevalent tag if you search within the bounding box of just the African continent. So this makes this tag as like to date the most important tag or the tag that would now most correspond to the WPDX platform if we are really to create this bi-directional seamless water integration workflow for WPDX and OSM and also encourage like a mapping model within OSM just to support improvement and continuous update of information within uh, the WPDX and then overall in the long run support um, maintenance and monitoring through the different institutions. So what are our aspirations uh, through this project is yeah, to really um, continue mobilizing uh, for sharing of data because that is the overall purpose of why we would actually review um, the schemas of both of these to integrate them. So forward is a collaboration, like um, I know many of you in this room are probably interested in non-governmental support and seeing how to improve and then also increasing the amount of uh, water point information within the open street map uh, that it can be utilized by the different institutions and public policy as well, um, those interested in public policy. So and support this seamless integration um, of data probably create um, small applications, programming interfaces, and support um, information and growth like that. Um, yes, I hit all the 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>